Hi, this is Paul Hamilton. I'm going to show you aerodynamics, the magic reveal, how the course works. So as we go through this, I'll be showing you the quizzes, I'll be telling you how it works, and I'll be showing you quite a bit of the video, and you'll see video playing in red down at the bottom. So we're going to go right into the course here. So after you sign up here, you go down to the course, you go into the course, and this takes you right to the course itself. As we can see in here, we've got our, less, our first lesson, second lesson. We're going to go ahead and expand that out. And we can see for each lesson, we've got a lesson content, and we've got a quiz. So we're going to go into our first intro and wait. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch the first part of this video, because this gives you an outline, shows you what we're going to do in the whole course here. Hi, this is Paul Hamilton. We're going to go over aircraft aerodynamics. Now, this is the magical science that lets us fly. The more we understand the forces and effects of aerodynamics, the better pilot we can be. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go over all the forces overview. Our lift versus our weight, thrust versus our drag. Then we're going to look at all of our forces. We're going to start off with our weight, which is actually pretty easy. Then we're going to go into our lift, we're going to do our drag, we're going to do our thrust, and then once we've gone over all of our forces, we're going to look at all of our forces, how those work for flying, how the control works, aircraft stability, stalls, and spirals. And that will complete our aerodynamics course. So let's get started. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the Piles Handbook our Aeronautical Knowledge Diagrams. They do a great job uh, with a lot of the diagrams. And unfortunately, the FAA got rid of a lot of good information in the more modern Piles Handbook Aeronautical Knowledge. So I've gone through and written a supplement, and we'll be going through that. Additionally, we'll be using some diagrams for the Airplane Flying Handbook. And I'll tell you when we're using diagrams from the Airplane Flying Handbook, so you can use both of these handbooks as a reference. So here we have our basic aircraft forces. And notice here we've got uh, figure 5-1. This is in the pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge, which we've uh, talked about. A note here, we've got our weight. Let's just, we're going to use a thousand pounds of weight since it's simple. To keep this aircraft in level flight, if we've got a thousand pounds of weight, we need a thousand. And it turns out with a lift to drag ratio, of 10 to 1, or glide ratio, however you want to call it. This lift and weight forces are 1,000. The drag and thrust forces are one-tenth of that. For purposes right here, we're going to start off with weight 1,000, lift 1,000, thrust, in other words, a pulling on here, of 100 pounds, and drag of 100 pounds. So notice for straight and level flight, the forces that oppose each other are equal. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start off looking at weight. We're going to go into lift. We're going to look at drag. And then we're going to look at thrust. Now for weights, we've got our max gross weight. This is the maximum weight for everything that the aircraft can hold. And as we can see, we're going to use 1320 here since that's the the max for light sport right now. We've got the empty weight, which is the airplane empty with no fuel, people, or baggage. And then, of course, if we take the empty weight. So after we get done with the video, we're going to go down to our next assignment, read the Pilot's Handbook Aeronautical Chapter 5, pages 5.1 and 5.2, up to thrust. So this tells us where to read. Click on that. Here are our book loads. And it says read page 5.1 and 5.2. We can say page 5.1, 5.2, up to thrust. So we can see what we'd read right there. Okay, so after we've read our book, we're going to exit out here, go back to our course. And we come back to our course. We see we've done our assignment here. Completion standards. Assignment is complete when the student successfully reads all materials listed, understands force of acting on an airplane listed, and completes the quiz with the passing grade of 70. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our quiz. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through one of the quizzes here to show you how this works. So here's our first quiz, question one of four. 
Why is it important to learn AR dynamics? It's a requirement by the FA. Well, that's a pretty good answer, but it will help become a better pilot. That's the correct answer. We're going to continue on with this. Four forces acting on in flight are weight, lift, gravity, and thrust. That's something people like to use, but gravity is not the word. Lift, weight, thrust, and drag. So that's a correct answer. Next. In case we're on question three. What's max gross weight? Maximum weight with passengers? No. Weight of the aircraft. The maximum weight the aircraft can carry for flight. That's a correct answer. Select that. We're going to hit next. What's, what is usable load? The weight that can be carried in the aircraft people. Now, actually, that's the correct answer, but we're going to select a wrong answer here to show you how this works. We're going to say weight of the aircraft. Finish quiz. And it's showing we got, actually, we got a passing grade here, 75. You've reached three of four point seventy five. So we're going to view questions. So now we're going to go back and kind of learn. So we got that one right. We got that one right. We got that one right. And the last one, notice this. What's usable load is showing us our wrong answer and it's actually showing us our right answer. So now we realize that this is the correct answer. So we've learned that. So we're going to go, go back up and we're going to restart the quiz. Go back, take this quiz again. So now we know what that right answer is. Lift, weight, thrust, and drag. We know that's correct. Next. What is gr max gross weight? Maximum weight that can carry for flight. We know that's correct. Okay, what is usable load? Weight that can be carried with people baggage. Okay, there we go. Finish quiz. Given our results. And you can see here we got four or four, so we got 100% on that. So we're going to click here to continue. Okay, and this brings us right back to our second lesson. And we can see, we can see up here at the top here, see our 14%, we've completed one out of the seven steps. Now, of course, the first one is pretty easy because introduction of weight is pretty easy. So then, of course, we go down and we go into our next section here, which is lift. Now, lift is pretty involved. Now we're going to start with streamline versus turbulent flow because this is a basis for most of aerodynamics. As air comes around an object, such as a flat plate here, we can see it comes here, it goes around, and it can't really stay attached, so it becomes turbulent here. As the shape changes, we can see how that turbulence decreases as we uh, change our shape here. So we're going to go through our... But accelerates, so it's got a, a much higher velocity here. We've got Bernoulli's principle. This is my supplement where I talk about uh, some of the important things that were left out of the Piles Handbook Aeronautical Knowledge. Cover a lot of this stuff here, but we're going to go down right now to this diagram here. So here we have a diagram of an airfoil, and we notice we've got our little arrows here. What happened? There we go. So this is part of the supplement here where I describe things a little bit better. We're going to be utilizing the concepts of deflected air as well as Bernoulli's principles to describe a number of important concepts in learning to fly. So here we've covered streamlined turbulent flow, Bernoulli's principle, Newton's third law. We're going to scratch the surface here of dynamic versus static pressure, airspeed. There we go. So we're talking about pressure. We go through that. Ground speed is going to be also 100. Another example, if we've got a 100 knot tailwind, we're flying 100 knots through the air, our ground speed is going to be 200. So basically, you need to understand that your airspeed has nothing to do with your ground speed. Your airspeed is how fast that air is going past that aircraft. As we saw, talk about airfoils. So, of course, a zero angle of attack would be the air coming directly somewhere around 0.5 and 12 degrees angle of attack would give us a coefficient of lift around 1. So notice as the angle of attack increases, the coefficient of lift goes up. Now notice how this coefficient of lift goes up, up, up. Okay, talk about that. The wing and the coefficient of lift for a given airfoil. And we notice that this coefficient of lift varies with the angle of attack. So we're going to finish up this introduction to angle of attack with a trick question. Now, is this at a high angle of attack, medium angle of attack, or low angle of attack? Most people will say 
initially that this is at a high angle of attack. But if the aircraft is climbing like this, it could be at a very low angle of attack. Now, of course, if it's flying level, it's at a very high, high angle of attack, it would be stalled. The correct answer is, well, there, if I ask... And there we are to the end of our video. It's kind of a long video here, but that's that. So now that we finished that video, now we're going to go into our other assignments. Now, what I did here was I actually totally rewrote Chapter 4. So what you would do is you'd go back into Chapter 4. Okay, so here we go to the Principles of Flight Chapter 4. I actually totally rewrote this whole chapter for a, for a number of reasons. And we go down, we read all that, we can see that. And this is really the area that's, that, that's most important that I added that was not included in, in the uh, FAA manual. And we finish that whole chapter. Okay, so here we go. We've gone through this chapter four here, and this explains really why I, I made those changes and what's in there. Chapter four here for your uh, information to be complete here, and you can go and read that, but uh, I, I think the chapter I wrote here is a little bit better. But we go down here to chapter five, starting at page five, three, the lift section, and stop at the lift drag ratio section five, five. And we go down to page 5.3, start at lift. And go down to 5.5. Five, and stop at the lift to drag ratio. So there's our reading. And we can see we've been through, we're back to the course now. And we've, we just looked at ch chapter five, completion standards, assignment is complete. When the student successfully reads all the materials listed, understands the forces acting on the airplane listed, and completes the quiz with passing grade of 70. So we, let's just look at this quiz right here. Okay, now this has nine questions in it. And we're not going to go through all that. Uh, but again, you go through the quiz the same way. Okay, so I've gone through the whole quiz here. And uh, hopefully I know the answer since I wrote them. Finish quiz. Hopefully we get 100. There you go, 100. So again, we're going to click here to continue. So now we go on to the next lesson here. Again, we watch the video, and we'll go through that a little bit since, since uh, you, that'll give you a little taste of what the video is. Play that drag. We can see how the video is pretty long. That's what, another 11 minutes worth. So here we're going to talk about drag. Now in drag there's two types of drag. The first type is parasitic drag where the drag increases with speed and the second type of drag is induced drag where the induced drag increases with angle of attack. Now, with induced drag, if you're at a high angle of attack and you start reducing that angle of attack and going faster, the drag decreases. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to look at both of these and why it's important to understand both of these and how they interact with each other. When we start to talk about drag, one of the questions I, I usually ask is, which one of these ha would be have more drag? Bring these up closer. Now, you can see these are both about the same wingspan. And, and obviously, this one comes to mind. And we'll jet ahead. We've got one more type of parasitic drag, and that's called interference drag. Now, as we've talked about, as the air comes over the wings, it accelerates. It gets to different speeds. As the air comes from, from the front here, as it comes around the fuselage, it's also going to be accelerating and decelerating. Now, where those two air flows meet, they don't meet exactly right, so there's different velocities. So you get a lot of, so you get turbulence here, and that's the interference drag. There we go. So we're going to go ahead a little bit here. We look at interference drag here, and we're just zooming through here randomly. Classic shot of an aircraft flying through smoke, and notice those vortices. They are big. Here we have another di diagram that I actually uh, added to help describe induced drag, which. Uh, for some reason, the FAA took this out of their book, which is too bad, because it's an important concept to help understand this induced drag. And what we do here is we, uh, we add both those together, get our total drag, and, and go to our magic point here. And we, get, we talk about ground effect and how that changes. Get to the end of that. 
And again, read Pyle's Handbook of Aeronautics, Chapter 5, starting at page 5, 5, lift-drag ratio through page 5, 12. Stop at the axle rotation. So we're going to read that. Again, we come down here. we got another quiz. But I'm not going to be going through every single one of these quizzes. you got an idea how that works. So what we do is we go on to our next lesson. Hit that. Now note off to the left here, we've got another way to navigate. So here we're, we can see our lesson one, lesson two, quiz. So we've got another way to navigate around besides just hitting our next lesson at the bottom here. So this is always off to the left. Now, of course, you can't see it when I've been going through this other stuff here because it's off to the left. But you've got this menu off to the left here to also help you get through your other uh, areas here. So we just went through our drag. We're going to go ahead and click on lesson three, four thrust and propeller principles. And we're not going to be going through all the quizzes, but we're just going to go through the videos here to just show you a little bit about how the videos work and watch the video, read the material and on we go. So we're going to click on that. So now again, we're on to lesson 2.4 thrust and propeller principles, propeller effects. We can see how here we've got an eight minute long video. And we're talking about thrust as well as propeller principles. So we've looked at our forces of weight, lift, drag. Now we're going to look at our thrust. Now the first thing to understand about thrust is that your propeller blade is basically just a wing is producing lift in this direction and that's our thrust. And it should be noted that this diagram could be a little bit better. These these airfoils should actually be rounded off in front. For some reason, when they did this, they have a sharp point here. But And we're going to move through the video here. We can see we're talking about the propeller, how that works. So the reaction, it wants to lower this wing. Now, if we're on the ground, it puts more pressure on this tire. And we're talking about our torque effect. And next, we get into our... P factor. Now, P factor and torque are commonly misunderstood, so we go over that in great detail to understand that. Of attack on the blade to get more angle attack on this side than on this side, creating more lift on this side and creating that left turn again. And then we go into some of our other slipstream effects, all our different effects. That this gyroscopic procession. So then what we do is we actually show how these torque effects really affect you in an airplane. Simulation so what this means for flying is you're taking off you need to get on that right rudder to keep you in the center of the runway for your takeoff and departure there we go so that's what we want to do here in all this stuff we we talk about our effects then we talk about how that really affects you flying and why you got to do what you got to do when you're flying and again we go through uh, we read our chapter chapter five with our pages completion standards we go down through we take our quiz and we move on to our next lesson now what we're going to be doing in our next lesson here we're going to be talking about all the forces that we've talked about we've already talked about all of our lift weight thrust drag now we're talking about how all these forces work together and create our loads now this is kind of a long section here 15 minutes because it's, we cover a lot of material here okay now here we talk about the real situation here where you got your your lift you got your weight now you've also got your tail load of course both the tail load and your weight have to equal your lift and we talk about the little teeter-totter effect then we talk about straight and level flight we talk about thrust and how excess thrust how you need less lift to climb so now we get our best lift to glide ratio at 70 and we, and we look at our gliding glide ratio now we get into our efficiency here and our glide ratio aspect ratio now we talked about our load factor forces here and for a 60 degree bank turn this is a load factor of two or two g's okay we can see how we get into our load factors and stall speed increase and why that all happens then we get into our vg diagram explaining this in great detail this is always a tough one for people to understand but we explain that in great detail so you understand everything here 
Yeah, and this takes a while here because this is there's a, a lot's going on in this VG diagram, so we get into that. We get to the end. It should be known that you can stall at any speed and any weight when you reach that critical angle of attack, which we're going to be talking about a little bit later. And we read Chapter 5, a couple different uh, areas here that uh, apply to what we just talked about, completion standards. Take our quiz, move on to our next lesson. Okay, now here we talk about control and stability. Now that we've learned a lot of our aerodynamic principles, we talk about how our controls work. So here we're going to look at the aerodynamics of our control surfaces. For our control surfaces, we've got our ailerons on each wing, we've got our rudder, and we've got our elevator. If we move our control stick to the right, notice what happens. Our aileron comes up here, and our aileron comes down here. Now when our aileron comes up like this, it's going to deflect the air up, pushing this wing down when we're flying. Similarly, it's going to push the air down. And you get the idea there. We, and of course we talk about our rudder. Of course we co cover our elevator, show that. And we show you your forces here, how that actually works. And we get into our rudder, showing how that works. Here, how that moves your left rudder. Yaw to the left. On with our controls. And we go into our adverse yaw. Explain that in great detail. And we talk about our stabilizer. Again, back to our basics here where we've got our weight and our download, how that has to balance with our lift. And we're going to start talking about stability. It's going to want to go up and, and get back to a faster speed. The opposite is true when we increase our speed. Notice as, as we're going faster, we've got more download on that tail, wanting to push this down, wanting that nose to come up. So if we pull back on the stick, we slow down, less tail load, the nose wants to go down. There we go. So we go into our stability in great detail here so you understand why the aircraft does what it does. Same thing here with our rudder. So what we're going to look at here is dynamic stability. Now, of course, what we want is we want positive static and positive dynamic. And we get to the end of our control and stability. Again... And we do our reading assignments here. We got chapter six where we that read that whole chapter complete with flight controls. Chapter five, axis of aircraft. Now we go into the pilot's operating handbook. Now, of course, here we give you a pilot's operating handbook, but if you're using a different aircraft, then you'd read that your own pilot's operating handbook on that for whatever aircraft you're using. Again, take a quiz, move on to the next lesson. Here's where we go into the details of stalls, spins, and spirals. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about stalls. Stalls are where we exceed the critical angle of attack. As we can see here, we've got a 10 degree angle of attack. We've got a 16 degree angle of attack here. And as we notice, notice how we start to get a our flow starts to get turbulent here. It's still flowing over the top of here, so we're not fully stalled, but we're starting to get this stall. And we increase this to the critical angle of attack, and all of a sudden, our air cannot stay attached here. It becomes turbulent. That's our stall. Now, if we look at this from a different perspective, and here, as we've looked at before, we can see at our low angle of attack, we've got a lower coefficient lift. We keep going up. As we increase that angle of attack, we get... Yeah, we can see how we talk about our load diagram here. Uh, lift here. Now knows how we're getting up. We're getting up to the critical angle of attack. It knows how we completely lose all flow here. So we've lost all of our lift. You can see how we're well above the critical angle of attack here. We've got no... Okay. And we notice here we actually look at our simulations here uh, showing actual wind tunnel tests showing a stall. Another thing we do is to show you what it's actually like to stall in an aircraft when we talk about the stalls. That way this can go into your brain so you can see it in the actual aircraft. The wing is starting to shudder there, and that's a good indication you have a stall. We reduce that angle of attack there and recover from that stall. So stalls are really easy to deal with if you keep the ball in the center and you're flying straight forward. Then you pretty much drop straight forward, no big deal. Then we go, go through and describe how 
carrying heavier weight creates a higher angle of attack, which brings us closer to our stall. And we talk about how that load factor and bank angle can go up to increase the stall speed as you go into your bank angle. Quite in-depth study on stalls. However, if you go into a stall and you're not centered, in other words, the ball's not in the middle, and for this example, we're yawed off to the right a little bit, you've got a greater angle of attack on this wing than on this wing. So if you're not coordinated and you go into a... Okay, and here what we do is we put this all together where if you're stalled, uncoordinated, we talk about the big problem of everyone stalling and then wanting to raise that wing with the aileron. Well, that can bring you into a spin. So, so intellectually, in your brain, we want you to know that when you make a stall, the wing starts to drop. You don't try and correct it with a stick. You make things worse. You keep the stick in the middle and correct any rotation with the rudder. This is fundamentally important to recovery from stalls and avoiding a spin. And then we move into the stall, the incipient spin, fully developed spin, and how to recover from that spin. And of course, what we talk about here, really, the use of controls is how to avoid that spin if you do stall and your wing does drop. Lastly, we're going to talk about spirals. Now, a spiral is completely different than a spin because a spiral, you're not stalled. You're just at a high bank angle, typically in a descent. A spiral can be used to lose out. And of course, we go into the spiral and the uses for those. And we talk about our loads in a spiral where our load factor is going way up and our, of course our stall speed goes up as we've learned. Level those wings, then you can slow it up rather than pulling back on that stick to try and slow it up. So there we go. We've learned the concepts of aerodynamics for you to be a better pilot.